What up my freaks, Ruinous and Sight here with part 18 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Vlad and Isabella Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time after defending Matilda's triumph from the uh, onslaught of Skarsnik and his hordes of uh, squigs, Rudolf Skellen fought against Queek wherein he destroyed his armies with pretty damn decent ease, especially considering his own army is, uh, well, let's just say, not where it should be. Uh, it's still waiting for a retrofit, or at least a proper retrofit, though speaking of, we have certainly begun doing so. He now has three Cairn Wraiths and two Morngulls, and the same sort of thing is starting to go on with Patil over here. Actually, speaking of Batilda, you are going to start moving and you're going to trade Maldwin over here. Is it Maldwin or Maldwine? I don't know. Uh, you are going to trade him the stuff that needs to go to Vlad specifically. Or, wait. Hmm. Do we trade? You know what? Let's give you the stuff that needs to go to Vlad and the stuff that needs to go to Rudy as well. So let's give you the Kieran Wraiths, the Hex Wraiths, and the Black Knights. Do we need Black Knights in this army? While it is nice to have fast movers, we will have the Black Coaches, and they are pretty good at chasing stuff down too, however. Hmm. We'll keep the bats because they're, well, they're bats and they're always, they're universally useful. Uh, but all this needs to go to Vlad. I suppose the Black Knights could be transferred, but you know what? The, uh, these guys can acquire Black Knights whenever they need. So I think we'll keep those just in case, uh, Batilda needs them. And I think that's it, right? We can keep the ghouls at least until we transfer them to a ghoul king. And yeah, I think the rest is okay. And we could take some just temporary zombies and skeletons off of you, I suppose, in favor of you getting all these elites. Uh, you can keep the corpse cart. You are supposed to go steal tech, so you're fine as you are. Yeah, alright, so let's just take a couple spears and a couple zombies. And yeah, we could have raised them, but it doesn't really matter what we do. And there we go. And now, Batilda, you cannot move anymore, but you will be moving perhaps towards Mount Gunbad, or ideally, I should say, towards Mount Gunbad, though it does depend on whether Grimgore tries to go after Silver Pinnacle and declares war on us. We'll see exactly where he goes after this. The Ruin Barrier here might actually come back to bite us, in that uh, Grimgore may not have anybody else but us to attack and decide to declare war. But if it happens, well, let's just say Batilda has been enjoying killing Greenskins and will always enjoy more of the same. And in fact... I'm kind of tempted to race for another unit of Black Knights, though at this point the cost is a little bit much. Wait, we can't get another Black Coach here, can we? Oh, and I could use another unit of Crypt Cores in here as well. It's a little bit ghoul heavy, but it'll be a preparation for the ghoul heavy army of, well, the Ghoul King when we raise him up, or the uh, Strigoi bloodline, rather. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it'll be worthwhile, though. I guess the only thing that we can get rid of here is going to be the zombies in favor of a Black Knight and a unit of Crypt Horrors. And that's another 400 per turn, but, uh, well, we're gonna get a uh, cash influx shortly. So, let's get rid of both of you zombies for now. I actually could have just traded them back. Probably kind of nickel and diming over the zombies, considering they don't really matter, but whatever. Alrighty, and then, Matilda, you can then raise... One unit of Black Knights, and then one unit of Crypt Horrors, and then stay as you are. There we go. A little bit on the expensive side, we're now down to 3k, and I prefer to have it at around 10. Especially for the vampires whose buildings are uh, fairly expensive to build. So we'll need to get those numbers up. And these are rookie numbers, but hopefully not for long. Anyway, Maldvin, you're going to keep moving towards Bok Bok the Lethal, and between you and Peter, you should be able to destroy him. We're going to delete one of these guys, obviously, after they ferry Vlad's stuff to Vlad. Though, considering we'll need to take Vlad's infantry away from him, because he doesn't really need it, while well, specifically these high-level Graveguard... Hmm. Or we just keep them there and just delete them rather than ferrying them all the way down. It's probably not worth the cost. We could just build up some Graveguard and uh, veteranize them as we go. So yeah, I think we'll just transfer the stuff, but then delete one of you temporarily until we need one of you to fight again. Anyway, that's you. Vlad, you're going to quickly fight Azazel to destroy Fort Astrosk. And ironically, there's a, uh, uh, there's a battle location very near to you, wherein we could possibly raise some other stuff you want. I probably want at least two Vargulfs in your army. 
Definitely a terror, guys, but once again, we do have to be careful about over-raising right now. As we don't want to get so low in terms of income per turn that we can't build stuff that we need. Like more gibbets, which we're about to get eight of, so we have to be able to actually build them. And, I mean, afford to build them. Also, a necromancer and a vampire is about to enter this army. The necro can replace one of the corpse carts. And, well, technically both corpse carts aren't going to be needed anymore, but uh, while the infantry is alive, and while the necro does not have vigor mortis, we can just keep those. Anyway, let's just move the elites in, and only the elites. This should be a very quick battle, that's why we're doing it manually, so you, you... Isabella and Vlad move forward, and we will move Emmanuel once again to fight in the air against the Zazel. She's been doing pretty good at that. And you guys go here. You know what? We can move the Graveguard as well. And you, Blood Knights, Flyers, obviously the Mortis Engine, obviously the Black Coach. All right. Everybody with Vlad and Isabella going to be group two. Group three, Vargas to move around, and I think I'm happy with that. You guys stay in the back just in case you might need to attack something. And you know what? Uh, we probably actually want to advance up here. Wait, no, 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 wait. I've gotten turned around, haven't I? This is the main location, the key building. Yeah, so let's advance here instead. The enemy should, in theory, blob up down there. In theory. All right, that's you. That's you, too. And the flyers need to be up here as well. Alrighty, and then we'll keep the Dire Doggos over all the way on this side, just in case the enemy doesn't put anything there. There we go. Start battle. Forbidden Rod, double up, and then Black Periap. And you go in and attack Zazel immediately. Vlad and Isabella move in. And you guys block up and move, or lock up rather, and move. And Devils of Schwarzhofen follow that in. You can help out with the Zazel, mostly to make it go by faster. We know that Emmanuel can kill him, but does need a little bit help with uh, debuffs and stuff. He's hitting pretty hard at this point. 87 to 77. Yeah, no wonder. And Master of Beguilement on you, please. And there we go. Okay, really need that Master of Beguilement now before Emmanuel gets hurt. Ooh, did you just miscast that, or what was that? Ah, there we go. Now it's up and running. And all of you kill him. Move forward. Isabella, you can pop a... Let's say a Van Hell's Dance Macabre, and you can use Enfeebling Foe on this guy. And you know what? Use a basic spell on yourself. Now, Isabella, I want you to Blood Chalice Emmanuel. Emmanuel, move out briefly. And in combination with the Blood Chalice, use your healing. There we go. Yeah, good job, Azazel. Alright, now move back into the fight. Blob should be here. The enemy's gonna cast a few spells, but ultimately it's not gonna matter. Let's send the Dire Doggos in to capture some stuff as well. And we will probably need to raise a few of those, uh, a few of our flyers back up. But he'll die in the air. Alright, looks good to me. Vlad, do you need to use the Karstein Ring? No, you do not. Yeah, and I don't think we even need to summon the zombies either, mostly because they'll just distract from the, uh, the killing here. Oh, wow, Emmanuel, you're getting hurt again. Yeah, Azazel seems to have leveled up a little bit over the last few battles. Nice. He's certainly hitting harder than he was before. I also want to see him die, though. I like the uh, like the way he falls to the ground like a comet. Yeah, I like that. Very nice. It's a, it's a nice death animation. I feel like death animations are not focused enough, and they, uh, they perhaps should be. And alrighty, you two. Now, go after that unit of Marauder horses, and we can send the other flyers in. I want to keep them at uh, more or less max HP, though now Emmanuel has gotten hurt enough that uh, she's reached her healing cap. Vlad, pop your Forbidden Rod, and you know what, let's get you using your debuff on, let's say, these chariots. Alright, anybody actually getting hurt here? Not really, but you know what, just use an invocation of the heck while we're at it. A few units might benefit from it, while you can continue healing the Devils of Schwarzhofen. And looks like those units are done for, and there we go. Easy enough. Let's speed this up a little bit. We are going to stay in this territory, which means we want to raise the devils to full. And okay, they're already raised to full. Do we need to heal anybody? I guess we could raise a couple of these Graveguard. You and you. We didn't lose any Blood Knights, and I think the Graveguard are back up to full. Beautiful. And you are no longer healing, correct? Yeah. Yeah, she reached her healing cap fairly quickly, didn't she? 
Gotta be careful with that. I guess while well, Emmanuel doesn't have the bonus of the extra healing cap that Vlad and Isabella get, which is really annoying because Isabella should be a, be the one that's dueling enemies in the air like Emmanuel is. Uh, but once again, she's been deprived of her hellsteed for whatever reason. Or flying nightmare. Alright, come on now. Zero losses, no damage, not to worry, we'll find a proper cinematic battle later on. We are going to... Well, we don't actually want this place, we're not gonna bother holding it, but sacking it gives us very little cash, but then again, we could use that to raid. You know what, sack it. Very potion of speed. Uh, sack it, but then go into channeling stance, which will allow you to heal to full. And then we'll raise it next turn, or move to Fort Stroghoff, raise stuff, and then come back and then raise it. Maybe that'll be the way. Because, uh, yeah, there may be some stuff that we want here. Also, uh, what? I just wanted to check. Uh, yeah, okay, it is Hellsteed. I was thinking of Barded Nightmare, not Flying Nightmare. And, yeah, you still don't have access to it, even though it says it here. And you don't have it in your tree under Mount. I wonder if there's a way to work around that to get Isabella her damn mount, which is uh, quite annoying to be missing. Also, some of you guys have asked in the comments why I tend to uh, uh, not apply uh, skill points. This is just a habit I have. I use it for most lords. I get the general stuff that's really important, but then hold on to points when I don't know exactly what I'm going towards. For example, with Vlad, I didn't know exactly how deep I wanted to go into the uh, casting tree, though it's usually not maxed out because he does run out of points. Uh, for example, I don't believe we'll be getting Arcane Conduit. I did want to get Arcane Pres Ar Uncanny Prescience, rather, but I wasn't sure whether we'd have the points there, and I'm still not sure about that. That said, we can spend some of them right now. Uh, let's get Waking Dead, because we are going to have three or four Blood Knights in his army, so they can get uh, they can get the benefits of that. And they'll be part of his Death Star. And Magical Animus, of course we want to get Dread Knights for those same units, and this also interestingly buffs up the Black Coach and the Mortis Engine with additional ward save, which is pretty nice. Uh, deadly power buffs up both Vargulfs, but not Vargeists. Wait. Oh, it's just Vargulfs. Ooh, do we get a point just to buff Vargulfs slightly? Hmm, you know what? That's harsh. I'm going to hold off on that one for now. Maybe get it, but we definitely want the buffs for the uh, Terrorgeist and Vargeist and slightly for the Feldbats. This also buffs Direwolves, but Vlad won't have Direwolves in his army forever. Anyway, we'll get on Death Resurgent. And then we'll spend the rest of the four points through Quick Blood, Bloodlust, and I guess Blade Shield. Now this is where it's going to be iffy, i.e. how many points we spend. So we get those two points in Blade Shield, which is, uh, which is quite nice. And incidentally, this is why the Saurus Smiter defeat trait for defeating Krokgar is so valuable. It's essentially worth two points. Melee defense plus ten for defeating Krokgar. Really like that one. Uh, but anyway. Presuming that we don't bother with Devastating Charge or Dark Knight, though actually Vlad could use a little bit more armor, but at 15, there's better picks. Assuming that we keep Transformation of Kadon, and that is the only thing that we get here, we wanted to get Immortal Horror, but with only 8 points remaining. Hmm... With only 8 points remaining, we could just basically make Vlad out to be a very strong fighter. We obviously want Red Fury and Blade Master. We probably should get Curse of the Revenant, ju Revenant just by virtue of the fact that vampires, well, especially Vlad, with all their healing, do benefit from having extra HP, and all the extra battle healing cap will help with that as well. Hmm. But then... If we get Curse of the Revenant, we definitely won't have enough points to get Uncanny Prescience. Raise dead cost reduction I don't really care about, but the Winds of Magic Power Reserve minimum plus 15, the upkeep, more importantly, and the campaign range are pretty good. Do we want a Lightning Strike, I guess, is going to be ultimately the question. It'll be, we'll definitely get Blade Master and Red Fury, but then it'll be Curse of the Revenant versus the last points in the blue line. 
And assuming there's nothing else we need in the red, assuming we skip Or of Dark Majesty, which is kind of a waste of a skill point, frankly. And I feel like we're probably going to skip Storm of the Night. I'll think about it. There will be more flyers that we encounter in the future, so there may be a reason for that. Anyway, I'll just get a few more skill points on everybody else. You guys are not going to run out of skill points, conversely. Unlike Vlad. Uh, let's get to you. You've got your good stuff, but you need that Earthling, just in case, Isabella. Penumbral Pendulum, you don't use it that much, but you do periodically use Van Hell's Dance Macabre. But you know what? I think perhaps it's time to make you a little bit of a stronger fighter for now. Let's give you a quick blood. Let's get you... Hmm. You know what? We have been blobbing up. Let's get Van Hell's Dance Macabre. You have quick blood. Your melee defense is pretty high. And then you, Emmanuel, also have five points. I believe we're now trying to move towards Immortal Will and, more importantly, Dark Benediction. So Wild Eyed for you, Immortal Will, and... I guess Tenacity. Tenacity over Fervor. Yeah, we'll get further. I mean, you're gonna get everything because you're a hero and you have plenty of points to use, so not super worried about that one. Alrighty, good for you guys. Caspar will ignore you. You're about to join this army. Edmund, you're still an assassin. And you know what? I should really start renaming assassins to assassins so I don't start getting them confused. So, Edmund, you're a sa assassin. Assassin, there you go, buddy. Though later on, I mean, wait, technically he's a tech thief, not an assassin. Okay, fine. <laughs> tech thief. This is just for my own benefit, so I don't uh, confuse what heroes do what. The more heroes you have, the, uh, the easier it is to get lost with the numbers. Oh, damn. Assassin Lich Lichberg. Let's just do assassin, at least for now. We could always rename them afterwards if they actually join armies. All right, that's you, Telig. I actually remember you, but let's just rename you Tech Thief. Although technically all the Tech Thieves are also doubling as assassins right now while we search for those blood kisses. And Rambert, you are the same way. Like so, and Malsar, you are the same way. There we go. Speaking of, we gotta really get a move on and hopefully try to assassinate here. Only one more blood kiss needed. Uh, in fact, come on, Tech Thief. You... Uh, <laughs> you got a new name. And... Ah, damn. I was hoping the christening of that name would be in blood. Oh, well. Oh, well. And disappointing. Alright, let's try the other Tech Thieves. You are unfortunately exhausted, so you can do nothing. You are not exhausted. And while it would be great to steal some tech... If you could assassinate this guy. Kill. Well, you failed. Damn. You got a cursed mirror out of it. Oh, <laughs> one more blood kiss. Uh, oh, well. And then you can't steal. Yeah, okay. Don't even bother to try that. Don't even bother. Alrighty, everybody else is good. Waller, Fafbach, you are potentially going to get attacked. What I'm worried about is these guys jumping over, and I think that means we need to get walls up in Steingard before they do, so that it can defend itself. The orcs will attack us eventually, after all. Also, you may want to start raiding Karak Angazar. Hmm, depends. I suppose we could raid these orky territories as well. Plenty of enemies to choose from around us, anyway. Okie dokie, and I think that's it. For this turn, at any rate. We got battles to find after all, so let's skip the rest. Nope, nope, Mordheim, you need an upgrade. Yeah, let's upgrade that stuff in the new provinces. And Flensburg, yes, Gibbet. Okay, I'm glad I actually looked here. The lack of Gibbets is uh, disturbing. I find your lack of Gibbets disturbing. All right, let's skip the rest of this. And we gotta get that last blood kiss for the 12th. Come on, end turn. Ooh, wait, let's put the camera out here, because I want to see what Grimgor does. If he declares war and whether we have to send Batilda to deal with him as well. I also wonder where the Skaven will go. At this point. Alright, Reichlin, Karazkarak, Grimgor, where are you going? Huh? Looks like he's not moving towards the Silver Pinnacle yet. It would be unfortunate if he actually took Mount Gunbad from the other orcs. Gotta be careful there. Alright, Clan Ferric. You gonna do anything interesting here? You are going to move closer to Peter. But I feel... Okay, War Machine Focus. Oh, recruitment cost, eh? Well, we're not gonna build those right now. So here's the question. You're not going to attack Karakungor. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. Actually, speaking of Karakungor, let's get that uh, gold mine up and running. But... 
Right? There's no way. Most likely what he's going to do is going to jump over us and he's going to hit Karak Raziak instead. Which is going to be kind of annoying. Uh, wait, I can't tell. Are we able to draw out the garrison here? We might be. Uh, if we are, it might be beneficial to just raise dead here. Also, are you able to approach him, Maldwine? No. Close, but not quite. Uh, let's move you here for now. Possibly set you up into ambush, we'll see. Whereas Batilda, if you do not actually have to deal with Grimgore, at least not currently, we're going to get the Assassin back, we're going to get the Necromancer to go start stealing tech, which is why we hired him. And then Batilda, you are going to briefly check Ray's dead, but I think we're okay with your army as it currently is. Yeah, we've lost the Karen rights and Hex rights, which was some much needed... Uh, uh, so much needed hard hitters, but we do now have the black coaches and I would like to get like four black coaches in this army at least this is going to be a carriages army Not completely mind you they'll have graveguard as a main line to uh, Hold while the carriages do the damage, but several more descendants and some black coaches anyway you I think are going to move Through March stance over this way start approaching gun bad We'll take them in the field if we have to, and ooh, that's quite a lot of enemies. Uh, do we have a damaging spell on you? We could get closer to Wind of Death. You know what, let's get Penumbral Pendulum now. We got Seduction last, which frankly was necessary. Would be really nice to have Wind of Death available, but we'd probably have to content ourselves with only Penumbral Pendulum for the battle with the Orcs. Let's get you Evasion as well. You also do have your Zombie Dragon, which is, by virtue of its breath, providing additional splash damage. Also, you, Artist Skeletal Steed, you can have that heroic killing blow and get your Foe Seeker as well and start going through Blade Shield to make yourself relatively unkillable. Alrighty, looks good to me. Pieter, move out here. And we'll deal with this shortly. Let's see what else we gotta do right now. Because I imagine if we fight out here, it'll be cinematic, so we might as well finish up with whatever else we're doing. Vlad, oh! Huh. These guys took Fort Estrosk. That's really interesting. I was thinking of moving in to claim Erengrad for ourselves, though I suppose a problem with that is that the Skaven and... Hmm, and the remnants of Kislev might try to reclaim Kislev, and they're not likely to peace out, are they? I also don't want Vlad to come back, although... Okay, well, either way, you know what? We're going to head you. Still in channeling stance. Oh, you can't... You can't heal here? Well, these guys don't like the uh, trespass. <laughs> Ironically, they would be willing to peace out with us, but this faction will die. Something will come in and kill them, so we don't really care about what they do. Let's get you here. I want you near to this summon location. And, ooh, oh, damn. I saw Lair of the Troll King, and I thought Throg was here, and I was like, yes, time to fight Throg, but apparently not so much. Uh, this isn't really worth sacking. I wonder, is Tower of Crack owned by Azazel? Maybe we should kill Azazel while here. Also, what can we raise here? Pretty much anything we damn well please. Well, that's nice. Including a Terrorgeist and another Var Vargulf if we want it, but uh, mostly I just wanted to check. Ooh, I did want to get a second unit of Blood Knights, though. Because we didn't end up raising one with Batilda, did we? As part of the uh, as part of the retrofit for Vlad. Mostly we raised the Vargulf and the Vargeists here, and he can raise them on his own. But now that we've expended the money, I kind of feel like we probably shouldn't. Although, that said... It would mean not having to have you ferry stuff to Vlad. You know what, I have to think about that. They did cost money to raise, but it may be cheaper to actually just do this and then delete this army so that we don't have to deal with that. Hmm. Okie dokie. Well, you know what, there's probably other admin stuff to do, but I really want to fight now, so let's have... Or let's see if Bok Bok is willing to take the fight to the field. Now, before we do that, we draw out a single bat and a single wolf from the garrison. Can we raise any more bats and wolves? Hmm, Crypt Ghouls might be a nice addition to this. It really depends on what exactly is in this army. I'm not really worried about the Clan Rats or the Skaven Slaves. But I also don't want to raise anything that's overly expensive and makes the enemy fear us. I mean, one more zombie unit and... I really feel like we want the wolves. Alright, let's hope that... No, he's not gonna fight. 
No, you know what? I think we have to go like this. How many units are in Karakungor? I mostly just don't want him to move away because I don't want to spend time chasing him. That would be irritating. You can't possibly think zombies are worth uh, are worth fighting. Let's get two zombies in here. Although it's the wolves I want more, but they're just out of principle. And then go like this. Will you fight? No, he will not fight. Damn. Although... He just screwed himself very badly. You should have fought, my friend. You would have actually had a bigger chance of winning had you done so, because now we're able to move you into march stance and have Peter attack. Very nice. And I guess if we're going to attack, we might as well spend our skill points. You are going to have to get Curse of Undeath. You have raised dead. Let's get Flock of Doom, quite effective against the, uh, against the Skaven. And then you have leveled up as well, and you got one point. You don't have Flock of Doom. You have the Hunger. I guess uh, Peter doesn't have the hunger. Do you need Flock of Doom as well? You know what? No, let's get you Aura of Supremacy. And I'm still not sure which one of you is going to stick around. The thing is, Sneaky Smiter feels like it would be great against the Skaven. And I doubt that Pete is going to be fighting the Skaven. So I think maybe we'll keep you around until later. Anyway, Pete, attack. Let's destroy this army cinematically. Close victory. Not against this. I was thinking maybe they'd have a Doom Wheel or something nice in there, but not so much. Have a war banner, though. Get to it. Soon, my legion, soon. Alrighty, poor Bok Bok, he is going to feel the wrath of so many undead. The tide of living flesh marches on as we have about, what, 20 zombies and skeletons? Something along those lines, not counting the uh, more elite units. And honestly, I feel like one of these armies would have been sufficient. Uh, but hey, now at least we get to see a massive number of zombies fight, which we haven't gotten a lot out of this campaign uh, so far yet. Later on, when we have more money, I'll probably get a few extra zombie armies like our uh, master necromancer army that just follow a few of the other armies around and just add a wall of zombies to them because I really like that and I feel like it's lore accurate and it, it is lore accurate uh, it just needs to be afforded also what the heck we got a lot of magic floating trees in the middle here I like how, I like how it's not just one but all of them at least we're consistent we're in the realm of chaos now people it's all it's all floating trees Zinch would be jealous. Alright, so it's just those ones in the middle, eh? Huh. I wonder if that uh, hill has been lowered, like the terrain has been lowered or something like that. This one at least has some weird glowing purple slanesh perfume fog or something. Hmm. Anyway, let's speed this up. We are going to wait a little bit for our reinforcements to arrive and then hit the enemy from both sides. There we go. Just gonna wait for our... Uh, uh, our pile of zombies to march on in, uh, but both units, or both sets, should smash into the enemy. We also have our Felbats, or Dire Wolves, as well as all of our other fast movers that are coming in from this army, like our Vargeists and our uh, Chillgeists and more Bats, getting ready to help as well. Alrighty, and we're gonna be coming, did I just speed it back up to, yeah, there we go. You're gonna be coming through the forest here, so it'll be a little bit hard to see. Skaven versus Undead. They can spot us with our glowing eyes, though, I suppose. Skaven can see in the dark very well. They are rats, after all, and, uh, well, they're pretty darn used to uh, tunnel fighting. Oh, I like the way that the eyes start glowing as you get near, though the rendering is a little bit odd that way. Alrighty, and uh, there we go, and what in the heck is that effect? Uh, that is poison. Oh, that's poisoned wind. I see, I see. They do have those Poison Wind Globadiers, which is why we're going to charge right through the gap created in our lines here. There's these zombies attacking here, all of these zombies and skellies attacking here, but our Chillgeists move in specifically to hit those Poison Wind Globadiers. And we're going to do the same thing with our Vargeists attacking other Globadiers as we can. We are also dropping down Flocks of Doom, so we're not the only ones getting damaged by a massive area of effect. And there we go, and our Vargulf has also tried to distract the enemy a little bit. Haven't gotten a lot of Vargulf play lately, which is disappointing because I love the Bad Hulks. They're so fun. Like living tanks when you can uh, keep their leadership from well tanking. 
Anyway, it looks like the chill guys have done their work and the enemy Globadiers are no longer engaged and able to fire. Uh, Maldvin has moved in and is distracting a bunch of people, or you are rats, I suppose. Rats are people too, damn it. And uh, <laughs> summoning zombies on top of them as he goes. Definitely have to describe a little bit what's happening here more than usual, because, well, you can't see anything on this dark map. And the enemy slingers, of course, are getting absolutely ripped apart by our, uh, by our bats. Yeah, poor, poor rats. They didn't have to face this type of army. They didn't have to face these elite units at all. They did this to themselves. Alrighty, there we go. Quite overwhelmed, I should say. And the balance of power is very much in our favor now, and I suppose it was when we started. Though the losses haven't been very big as yet. They are starting uh, to increase. The uh, the enemy lord has also been caught by our Vargulf here. Bok Bok the Lethal versus the uh, Nameless, so far, Vargulf. Although, once again, it's likely that this Vargulf won't stick around. You gotta get one in uh, Vlad's army. Ooh, you have a Ruby Ring of Ruin, do you? I swear I saw a fire effect. Alright, Cairn Wraiths plus a Vargulf. This is an interesting combination of units. Yeah, I guess it's unfortunate for the Warlord because, once again, it's one of those smaller models with not a lot of mass and the Vargulf can just move it around uh, as it pleases. Otherwise, the enemy army is basically done for. They've lost, well, about half their troops so far and many of their roots, uh, roots, uh, units are shattered. Uh, the chill guys are chasing off like four units at the same time and, uh, well, that's appropriate because they slow them all down with that glorious aura in combination with Frostbite. Love the Yuna, definitely one of my favorite regiments of renown in the game. They may not, uh, Hex Wraiths and Chill Guys may not be the strongest units, but I've always loved them, uh, though granted prior to the uh, nerfs that they've received in the third game with regards to the reduction of physical resistance. However, the Chill Guys in particular. And now that they have Frostbite, they're stronger. Just the aura alone was very nice. Alrighty, well, it looks like the battle is just about over. Bok Bok's ready to run, and he's done apparently no damage really to the Vargulf or to the Cairn Wraiths here. And our two von Karstein lords have come in to make sure that he dies. Otherwise, since the enemy army has already moved away, we don't need to chase anybody down, which is great because Skaven run away really, really quickly. Might say it's one of the things that they're best at. Yeah. I, uh, I do get disappointed in how the AI plays early game Skaven, though it it isn't very good with them, similar in the way that it isn't very good with early game Orcs or, uh, uh, orcs or Undead, actually, because it doesn't comprehend how to use Skaven Slaves or Clan Rats effectively and just moves it moves them against you in a big blob, rather than attempting to make use of those numbers and surrounding you and uh, having a decent amount of Skaven Slave Slingers, it really goes heavy into Clan Rat and uh, Skaven Slave Melee rather than the cheap Slingers, which is also kind of not the right way to go. But anyway, I digress with that. Uh, we'll save that for other campaigns. Uh, let's see what the damage is, though I suppose it probably isn't much and I definitely know it won't matter. Well, there we go. Bok Bok, the not-so-lethal, drowns in a tide of undying flesh, or undead flesh. Now, we are going to take the money, because these armies don't matter, and most of them will be deleted, or at least most of those troops will be deleted. Uh, as for who we keep... Oh, ally mission successful, that's swell. Uh, you two, you're gonna join into one army, and then one of you is gonna get deleted. Uh, I think, while we do want to ferry the Chillgeists over, and perhaps the Cairn Wraiths, I think perhaps we let the Vargulf and the Vargeists go, just by virtue of the fact that once again Vlad can raise his own now. I didn't realize that there would be a nice, uh, a nice location like that for him to get his stuff all the way up here. And yeah, once again, we did spend like a thousand gold or 
a thousand gold on each of them. So about 2,000 gold, but at the end of the day, it costs 2,000 gold per turn minimum to maintain one of these armies, so... Yeah, I think that's better. Uh, you can move up to here, you can swap some units. We'll keep... Uh, wait, once again, I want to check their traits. You have which trait? Legend Slayer, which gives you Unbreakable, which is pretty decent to have for a vampire, I think. Yeah, fine. We'll keep you, let's give you Restless Dead and Aura of... No, let's give you Hunger for now, we'll get you Aura of Supremacy later. Alrighty, and then we'll swap our units around. Peter, you get to keep uh, the Chillgeists, uh, the Unholy Lodestone, definitely gonna need that. And control, or keep the Karen Rapes because you're gonna swap some units with uh, Rudy down there. And you can have the Bats because you're Von Karstein and you like Bats. And I believe that's it, yes? Yeah, we can delete the rest. And do you need this so you don't actually need all of these spears? In fact, you probably won't need any of them because they're all going to get replaced by... Hmm, by Graveguard. You know what, let's get rid of these Skeleton Warriors as well. And you could just keep the zombies to uh, fill out your ranks for now. Alright, like so. There we go, you're going to go south, most of these zombies are going to get replaced by Graveguard, and we also got to remember to build the Graveguard structure here, uh, in preparation, though I think after this turn, because Vlad's going to raise some stuff, you do not need the Screaming Banner, I was going to give that to Vlad, and, well, the Gravedigger is fine, but <laughs> we will get you one once we raise you again later. For now, you guys are gone. Oh, I could have given the Vargolf to Batilda, actually. Ugh, do we keep you for a turn just to trade her the Vargulf? You know what? Oh, wait. Ah, oh, they're too far away. Damn it. I just realized I was supposed to give you the Vargeists as well. Alright, fine. Delete all of this. And delete two zombies. Well, one zombie. You can keep the Vargeists because you're going to massively reduce their cost. And if anything, we uh, want more Vargeists in this army. How soon can we get that? Rooting Horrors is at rank 10, so we start saving points now, and then we'll have that massive, cheap Vargeist reduction. Good. Gotta make sure you have those. You'll be using those instead of your cavalry, I suppose, Peter. Alright, that'll work. And then... Keep the Vargolf or give him to Batilda. It doesn't really need the Vargolf per se. And you know what, That's, it'll, be, it'll be an extra turn or two where we travel over there. You know what, the yeah, Alts just, if she ends up needing a Vargulf, we'll just get her a Vargulf. That'll be fine. Okie dokie, let's move everybody else around. Madeline, you need to join Vlad, but he's a little bit too far away, so keep moving up here. And though he's getting closer. Vlad, you're about to raise stuff. Casper, you're about to join Vlad's army, so Vlad, lose your... You know what, you don't need the tithe anymore. Like so. Gaspar, join the army. And Madeline, you will join as well, so we will be at 19 out of 20. You will want to get a Vargeist. As well, of your own. Like so. Alright, three should be decent for now. I do want another Blood Knight unit as well, but... You know, let's see what we've got in terms of our cash first, and then... We'll raise after. It's a little bit less important right now. Also, Vitevo. You are not going to be able to defend yourself very well, but uh, I guess you do need a charnel pit. We need lots and lots of growth in this location. Same thing goes for Kislev, but Kislev is good at least until next turn, wherein we upgrade it. And Nagenhoff, aha, Essen, you get an upgrade, and that's most of our cash. Ooh, in fact, if we want to move Vlad out... Well, I guess we could move him next turn. What's the likelihood you attack here? Non-existent. Alright, so you stay here then, Vlad. At least for one turn. And you can't heal anywhere here? No. I'll stay in the channeling stance anyway. And perhaps raise some more stuff next turn then. Do we need just second Mortis Engine for you? You're going to be the Death Star, so probably not. You'll be in close enough proximity yes, so that it's, uh, it's not necessary. Alrighty, good enough. And then we can, in fact, build Essen. Which is quite lovely. Next up, Waller, you don't need to move Rudy. I wanted to send you a raiding. Though... Oh, hello. What you doing here, Argulon? Deteriorating, they don't like the fact that we're an actual threat. Okay, well. I can, I can see how that might be an issue. Also, what do we have here? Oh, you like non-aggression pact, eh? Ah, uh, but you guys are at war with the Caravan of Blue Roses, so we shouldn't do that. What about you? 
You are friends with the Burning Wind Nomads. You are trading with the Western Provinces and at war with a lot of factions here. Hmm. And the question is, how will the Caravan of Blue Roses feel about us? How are we going to confederate them if uh, they don't appreciate us? Minus 14. It is improving a little bit, but yeah, as we can see, they don't like the treaties with the Burning Nomads. I think we'll leave these. These factions are most likely too weak to bother with anyway. We really just need the northern and ideally western provinces as well. Visenland moving closer and closer to that uh, military axis, which is nice. Northern provinces, sort of, a little bit. Oh, eventually, we'll probably save up enough money to pay you for it. And Draika, you could still, you know, get... Uh, and get that military alliance, but for now we're good. Anyway, I don't see that main orc army. It went somewhere. Which means, at least for a couple turns, we're gonna send you to raid. Probably not gonna be a crazy amount of value to it, but you're not doing anything here right now, anyway. Ah, oh, you can't raid this turn? Okay, fine. Stay in your own territory, then. There you go. And we can't really leave here because of Matorka, that's the thing. It needs walls, and it needs salt, and it needs lots of stuff. Otherwise, I'd march you down to Myrmidons or through Orky territory. Oh, there's another little uh, full Orky stack here. Where did Draika go? She's out here, eh? Hmm, maybe we need to get Rudy back to deal with that Orky stack. I didn't realize it was there. It's fine. Move near to Rackendorf, and let's see if we can ambush it or kill it or something along those lines. Alrighty, that looks good to me, and oh, we got our 12 Flood Kisses. I didn't see that. Nice. Would have been unfortunate. Necrog Bloodline Awaken. And there we go, that buffs up our upkeep reduction by 10%, which is quite significant. Uh, you are generating the money that you need, so we're good with you. Though we will be building the, uh, the good stuff back there as well. Eventually, it's just those buildings are a little bit too expensive for us now. Anyway, Tech Thieves. While I would love for you to steal more tech... Actually, while I would love for you to do more assassination, I think we got what we need in terms of important stuff. Now it's time to instead steal tech, conversely. So, you, go here. Prioritize steel tech for a little while, rather than... Uh, rather than assassination. Ah, oh, another failure. And that's all of our cash, unfortunately. But we're getting to some really good techs, so... Wound for you. Alright, you guys are good and there's no more money to spend on anything or anybody, so we're gonna end that turn. And we're gonna see if we can't get another battle with Vlad or somebody. And at the very least, raise Vlad's stuff. Maybe these guys will come here. I wonder if they're willing to fight us. Somebody better come here. Aranessa, you still want peace, that's great, but no. Crooked Moon, Bloody Hand, Broken Axe, Caravan, Ecstatic Legions. Uh, oh, damn, I thought that was an army belonging to them. No dice there. Winter Tooth, are you moving closer or are you moving away? I can't quite tell. I'm willing to bet if we move towards them, they'll run. They're not gonna they're not gonna fight Vlad. They're too cowardly to fight Vlad. They're right on the edge of this, which is kind of interesting. Oh, Western Provinces Confederated the Burning Wind Nomads. Now I'm curious. Oh wow. Ooh, that's not so good. Angren's been destroyed. Okay, Rudy, you need to be careful now. Uh you're in danger. I'm gonna chuckle like Ralph. Yeah, so here's the thing. With these guys having confederated, most likely they will declare war on us. I'm almost tempted to preemptively declare war on them, but we don't have anybody to take these territories and we'll get attacked there. Thus, Rudy, at least temporarily, you're gonna go back to here or sit in Matorka for a little while, or you know what, maybe sit right here. We don't know which way we'll have to turn. This army is costing us money per turn, man, but until we know. I suppose we could start moving down to attack. We'll see. We'll see. What I wanted to also check whether... Ooh, first of all, you. Nah, you're not gonna trade with us. You still... Yeah, you're still not happy. Have we found the Western Provinces? Yes, we have. Beautiful. And they're willing to trade, and they're willing to militarily access, and they're willing to give us money on top of it. This is what I wanted. And they're actually trading with the Caravan of Blue Roses. Oh, lovely. So they're much better than what we had going with the, uh, the Burning Wind Nomads. 
That's absolutely lovely. All right. Propose the suffer. Wait a second. One second. They want to trade out, but they don't want to military or they, they don't want the alliance. I was just thinking maybe we could only do non-aggression pact and offer the other stuff for an alliance, but no the dice. Alliance. It's okay. As our reputation grows, or as our relationship with the various Cathay and territories grows, that'll go better. Also, the Jade Custodians. You are not at war with the Blue Roses. You know what? We're gonna non-aggress with you, then. Mostly because you're friends with the Western Provinces. Actually, wait. 2,000? Now it's not happening. Once they like us more, maybe we'll do that. Okie dokie. That's a lot better. And no trade agreement, no military access with this and land, but it is once again still rising. Wargrove of Woe has a mission for us, which means go after, let's say, Fator Christensen. Alrighty. That looks better. Now, Vlad, I would like you to retrofit your army or complete the retrofits and to possibly fight. I was gonna put Madeline in this army, but I'd rather get a fight going than necessarily rely on that, so... Well, let's first move our heroes out. Uh, you briefly go here, because I want Queen B for this tech thief. Nice, nice. You'll be exhausted, but you can steal tech afterwards. Then, you can still reach this guy, but I'm willing to bet he'll run away. Uh, anyway, you're going to move up, let's say, here. You are going to raise the second unit of Blood Knights. And damn the expense. And then Madeline's gonna join, so that'll be replacing the Konigstein Stalkers, because we don't really need them here. And we don't need another Corpse Cart as well. Is there something else that we wanted to raise in this army? I mean, yes, there is stuff that wants to be in here, but is there anything that we want now? Uh, I really want that Terror Geist out of the principle of the thing, even though I know I, we really don't need it here. If anything, you know what? Let's replace another corpse card with a second black coach. We'll probably never buff them here, but we can always trade them away, and uh, that one's been doing quite good work after all. Yeah, I like that more. Alright, hey, we got War Machine Focus completed for that as well. Nice. Alrighty, that's good enough. We'll get the Terror Geist eventually. Now, I doubt that you're going to stick around for this, but we'll give it a try. And then if not, if you're going to run, then we'll attack the Lair of the Troll King next turn and sack it. No, you're going to fight because you draw out the garrison. Oh, amazing. Obviously, we're going to do this cinematically. Lovely. We get to uh, see Vlad's somewhat retrofitted army. Not completed because we do want to uh, get that other vampire, but get them there. Certainly get them there. Darkness reigns. Alrighty, here we go. This is the first battle, the debut battle of the second stage of Vlad's army. Obviously, it isn't complete and it is going to change once again. We need to get a Terror Geist in here as well as a Vargulf and possibly two. I haven't decided whether we're going to keep the, uh, the black coaches in here permanently, but they have been doing pretty well, so perhaps we'll keep at least one. Yeah, but uh, we definitely want a Terror Geist, a couple more Blood Knights, and one to two more Vargulfs. Obviously, that'll I mean the rest of the infantry is lost, but uh, as we can see, now that we're in the second stage, we're a little bit more Death Starry, a little bit of that uh, a s smaller formation that doesn't spread out as much and just moves into a blob, unlike several of our other armies. This also is a bit of a strange battle in that we've been forced to Vanguard deploy out in this corner here. I don't think I've done that for... Uh, uh, for this campaign, or for many campaigns generally, because, well, usually I just Vanguard deploy here, right in front of the enemy army. Reason I did that was because the enemy was so close to the edge of the map, I'd rather advance on them from this side, such that they can't run away to here, as we do want to chase them down. Though I am glad that the AI didn't run. Very impressive. And also, I do like their army with all these, uh, skin wolves. That's just fun. 
All right, skin mom's knocking Vlad down a little bit, and while that probably annoys him, uh, they are unlikely to do any damage, and he kills one in anger with a uh, with a casual swing, or perhaps not so casual angry swing. Looks like the enemy's gonna move in with his lord, and that's also not the best idea because you can get easily surrounded and killed up here. Finally, we're gonna get a pit of shades in the way of the enemy as they try to approach us. And you gotta love the spell, and it, it looks even better on the darker maps because it's so, uh, it's so bright. Very nice. Alrighty, and once again, we're just going to try to maintain a relatively close formation. Gotta get that uh, Mortis engine supporting everybody, adding the aura damage effect to as many enemies and the healing effect to as many of ours as possible. I could be using the uh, Black Coaches a little bit more to actually run around in the background and act more as chariots, but they seem to be okay for now, just, uh, and just in the blob, at least for this army. We're gonna be using them more like chariots in Batilda's army, because She's going to have a relatively big front melee line while the chariots go to work in the background. Just slightly different uses for them here. Mostly because when they're near to Vlad and near to the Mortis engine, they can't really be hurt or killed because they'll just uh, heal up. Well, it looks like the enemy lord is already routing. He's seen the way the winds are uh, turning. Is that the phrase? Uh, the way the wind is blowing. There we go. That's what I was thinking of. As the enemy army has already dropped to half, our blood knights have also moved out together with our fast movers and are catching the enemy skin wolves and the enemy... Uh, uh, and the enemy, I think... Marauder Horseman? I don't think it was Horse Masters. Some kind of cav. Yeah, it's Horsemen. They got throwing axes. And more horsemen with throwing axes. So good luck to them, but they're all gonna get run down. And it is very nice now to have two units of Blood Knights. Feels a lot more appropriate. This may not be the Red Duke's army, but we still want a sufficient amount of Blood Knights for Vlad. All right, and just like that, the first of the enemy armies is pretty much broken really quite quickly, but, uh, well, what do you expect? Uh, Vlad's army is our elite army with our much uh, stronger units, and thus the expense. And thus really not a lot of stuff can stand against it. We're gonna wait until we see some uh, more difficult armies to face. And hopefully we can fight Throg. We are up here now searching for more battles. And if nothing else, we can keep going through uh, Norskan territory. We may even have an... Hmm, now I'm just thinking, maybe we attack Clan Molder. I think last time we checked, they had a 10,000 point, uh, or 10,000 favor or dark magic sack value in their city, plus the actual battle value. What we could, in theory, do is repeatedly uh, sack the Hell Pit. Just for the cash, and then only take it later on. Though then again, if we attack Clan Mulder, then we'll be having to deal with the non-stop Skaven armies. Though that said, taking the Helpit would mean a lot of, uh... Hmm... Would mean a lot of weak... well, a lot of strength reduced from that faction in particular, because they wouldn't have a lot of territories outside it. But just a couple of forts, which wouldn't be generating a lot of cash. Anyway, this battle is over. I'll have to think about what to do with Clan Molder, whether we attack them now or later. Though it is only a matter of time until we do, mostly because the, uh, they will attack us, there's no doubt about it. So we shall see. There's a lot of value in their territory. It's just that it's a little bit... It's a little bit too far north, so we do have to defend it, and we probably want to defend Erengrad first. But anyway, anyway, there we go, our first victory for Vlad's second tier army, and, uh, well, let's just say this little Norskan army couldn't really stand against it, uh, but I'm sure we'll run into some nicer armies shortly, and we did see that Festus has a bunch, and uh, some fairly elite ones at that, so I'm looking forward to some fun there. All right, well, there we go. Easy enough. I'm really glad that the AI didn't run from this because it's free money, free XP, and, well, no free items, but free money and free XP, and somehow Vlad got two levels out of that. Really, from this. Huh. I also like the fact that the AI built kind of a fun army with berserkers. 
and skin wolves? That's neat. It's not the uh, boring old type of army. Anyway, return those captives for more cash. Hopefully they come back and allow us to raise them yet again. Uh, we will not be able to... Hey, a wand of jet. Nice pickup. Hey, and post-battle loot increase for Vlad. That's nice as well. I guess we'll be sacking the Lair of the Troll King next turn, though we will have to suffer a little bit of attrition. I imagine these guys might head back to this territory, but uh, we'll see with regards to that as well. And uh, I think it won't be long until Vlad no longer needs his infantry at all. Uh, in fact, with only three of them remaining, it'll probably be the next time we raise a bunch of stuff for him. Uh, finally, before I forget here, and we are just about to call this episode, you have to have... You know, lose that Gleaming Pennant because it's absolute trash and gain that Screaming Banner instead. There we go. And honestly, that Scarecrow Pennant isn't doing much for you either, but uh, I'm not sure whether we can use anything else here for you anyway. So hold on to it for now, I guess, and then if we need something later, we will replace it with it. Nah, just keep it for now. And yes, right before we end this, you guys move this turn, which means Maldwin, you are just gonna briefly transfer your Vargeists over to Pete. Like so. Pete, you're gonna see if you can't raise new Vargeists here, which you cannot, you'll raise them elsewhere. Then Maldwin, for now, you're gonna go say goodbye. Which puts our army upkeep back up to 7,000, or our uh, in turn income up to 7,000, which is a lot better. And it makes me a lot happier. Oh, looks like Grimoire is going to start reclaiming territories here. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Anyway, with that, we are going to have to call this episode here. Next time, we will probably strike at Mount Gunbad with Batilda. While Vlad continues wrecking stuff up north, raising stuff, sacking stuff, maybe we'll go after Azazel to destroy him for good. And then, ideally, we'll take Erengrad for ourselves. So we do have to keep an eye out on Kislev and on Mulder as well. And these two alone will be a nice enough of a cash cow to uh, get us. And ooh, Wolfenberg's been destroyed now now, so it'll sh soon, I think, be time to head southward and attack Festus's armies. They seem to still be killed back at Talibayim, but the AI is not going to hold them for long, especially since the uh, location looks a little bit weak, and we do want the gold mine out of Wolfenburg. So, uh, yeah, uh, this should uh, make for some fun stuff, presuming that Franz doesn't kill them all himself. Otherwise, in the south, we will most likely be engaging in war with the... Uh, uh, the bloody hands shortly as well so lots of wars to come and more fun vampire reps don't forget to leave a like and comment stay tuned all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching